Number 58. Figure 11.34a shows the effect of tube radius on the height to which capillary action can raise a fluid. Letter A. Calculate the height H for water in a glass tube with a radius of 0.9 centimeters, a rather large tube like the one on the left. So for letter A, uh, we need to have a, a formula for uh, capillary action, height of capillary action basically, and that's the formula over here on the right hand side. Right? This says that the height that a certain fluid can obtain is going to be a function of 2 multiplied by the surface tension gamma multiplied by the cosine of what's called the contact angle right? divided by then the density of the fluid multiplied by gravity then multiplied by the radius of the tube. So the two things, right, contact angle, this is, this is either going to be memorized or you'll have to look it up on a table or you might be given it on the test, not sure. Uh, however, though, we have to know the contact the two important things to uh, determine the contact angle are going to be the fluid you're talking about and the container it's in and what the material is made out of. So in this problem, they're talking about, um, where is it, water in a glass tube. So that has a certain contact angle, all right, um, that's going to be zero. And also, the surface tension of the fluid, that's also for water, okay, that's going to have a certain value too. We're going to use the value of water at... Uh, about 20 degrees Celsius. All right. Um, you could use zero. I mean, it doesn't say the temperature here, so I wouldn't necessarily say that you're wrong, but um, 20 degrees is probably a little more standard. Zero degrees Celsius would be almost freezing. So probably not the case here, but again, it's debatable. And everything else we know the constants for density of water, etc. So we can just start plugging in the values. So the height is going to be equal to two times the surface tension, which is 0.0728. And then multiply by the cosine of that, whoops, multiply by the cosine of that contact angle, cosine is zero, all right? And then all divided by the density of the water, which is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter, multiplied by gravity, 9.8, then multiplied by the radius. So it told us the radius was 0.9 centimeters. Please take that value, 0.9, and then divide it by 100 to get it into meters. So now all we have to do is plug it into the calculator, right? Cosine of zero is gonna be one. And then, so you can basically just eliminate that if you wanted. So then it's going to take uh, that value times 2, multiply it by 0 0.0728, and then take that and divide it now by, in parentheses, 1,000 times 9.8 times 0.9 .9 over 100. And we should get a value here of about, we'll put it in scientific notation, so it looks like 1.65 times 10 raised to the, what's that, minus 3, right? Uh, minus 3, and that is in terms of meters. You can convert that back to centimeters if you like, but I'm going to leave it in terms of meters. If you have to convert it to centimeters, multiply it by 100. So that takes care of letter A. Now let's take a look. Uh-oh. Let's take a look at letter B. So it says now, what is the radius of the glass tube on the right if it raises water to 4 centimeters? Basically, same formula again. right? So height is equal to 2 multiplied by the surface tension multiplied by the cosine of the contact angle, all divided by then density, that looks like pressure, multiplied by density times gravity times the radius, right? This is for water again, so just cosine of zero is gonna be one. And what we need to do is algebraically solve this now for the radius. So all we really have to do here in terms of algebra, just simply literally move this R on up and move this H on down and voila, we just solved, okay? There it is. Now we just got to plug it all in. So it's R now multiplied by the uh, surface tension of the water. So it's the same value over there on the right hand side, 0 0.0728. Divide that now all by our density, 1000. Uh, gravity, 9.8. And then the height. Look, they told us the height is 4 centimeters, but we need that in terms of meters. So again, just take 4 and divide it now by um, 100. And let's see what we got. So here's the radius now. Uh, so it's going to be 2 times 0 0.0728. And then take that all and now divide it by 1,000 times 9.8 times 4 divided by 100. And we should get a value here of 3.71. 3.71 times 10 raised to the minus 4. All right, and that is in terms of uh, meters. Okay, great. Now this answer should make sense, right? If we found that um, this is the height that was obtained before, right, of the tube that was uh, 0.9 centimeters, 
then we should expect that if the height goes a lot higher, right, in the second case, then that the tube's radius should be smaller, right? If you notice here in the formula, I'm going to highlight it, the height and the radius are inversely related. So as the radius goes up, height of the uh, fluid goes down in terms of a tube, right? And vice versa, if the radius goes down, height goes up, all right? So guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. We look forward to helping you out with more questions. Take care.